This week in comic books was extremely slim pickings for me. I only have five comic books, and you're talking to the guy that literally buys everything. And I hate to say it, but it was even a bad one in that group. We're going to talk about the difference between female characters and how to make them interesting this week, I think. This, this may hurt some feelings. So let's wake up. Let's get some coffee. Let me show you where to get some coffee. Check this out. Cheers. How are you doing today? Off your brand coffee. Very good. Must say. Go get yourself some. Hey, what's going on, you weirdos? Okay, I'm Pocan Joe, and as always, appreciate having you here. Love having you here. But uh, let's just jump into this week's comic books. This should be a relatively short video for you. Um, first, we're going to start with Batman 131. Um, multiversal type story here. Batman's in another multiverse. Um, so, again, we did the thing where we mesh up characters in this one. In this one, Harvey Dent two face is like half joker half harvey dent and he's got uh the venom from bane in him right so he's all big and huge and he's really putting off these kind of uh i don't know judge dread type vibes in it like, the law i am the law right he's that guy he's going around he's like the law enforcement guy also we got uh jim gordon in this who's kind of a skeleton disembodied skeleton that's just kind of there more of a hallucination or subconscious maybe Right, we'll see how that kind of plays out, like the Jiminy Cricket type of role. Let's see how that plays out while Batman's in this other universe someplace else. And we got introduced to a possible Robin to him, right? Little kid really good at throwing knives. It's the only thing I can think of. So uh, while all that's going on, we kind of got our first glimpse at this Red Mask character. Again, multiverse stuff. They just kind of cram a couple of characters together. So this shouldn't be too hard to figure out. If you read anything about Red Hood, it's my guess where this is going. But all in all, he's there. The law's way overreaching in this. He's kind of fighting it. And then the second story in it is pretty much everything else that's going on while he's in the multiverse, right? So we got the superheroes still trying to keep, like the Robins and the Nightwings and all those guys, the Bat family, trying to keep Gotham to some level of, of, of law, <laughs> right? At the same time, too. So I, I guess you could say the comic book most mostly about law and order. You know, the extremes of it to the to the outburst of it when they hear news like Batman is gone or something like that. It's interesting. I think it's a good jumping on point for this particular arc. I had to pull away from some of the Batman stuff because there was just too much at one time. Like every show here on the comic book review for like the longest time was like eight Batman comic books. I kind of had to pull away, but I'm happy to come back on this. I don't mind. Um, kind of meshing up. Yeah, it could be seen as cheap or whatever, but for the most part, it's pretty good. And a version of Catwoman is in here, too, for all you Catwoman fans. So all in all, I'll give this a pretty good read. I'll chase this story down and see if I'm right about this Red Mask character. All right, so next, we got Fantastic Four. I've been enjoying this up to this point, so we're, we're on issue three now. Uh, remember, uh, Thang and his wife, Alicia, they kind of went to a town where time just kind of looped the same day over and over again. And then uh, Reed and, and Sue Richards were kind of, they were in a town full of doom bots that needed to be reprogrammed at some point. So now what happened to, of course, our boy Johnny Blaze? Well, he stayed in New York, picked up another identity, which, by the way, was fantastic. Seeing him kind of being a cool guy with the Fu Manchu mustache in it, the whole nine yards. And he's going to help this particular company fight for worker rights in this, you know, the kind of unionized thing. Um, and they kind of take down this evil, evil boss, if you will. Um, the most interesting part in this that I found is, is that the bad guy actually knew Johnny Blaze and kind of knows the secret that you can't burn me, like literally and figuratively, I guess. Right. Because you won't do it. You can control your flames within a breath's hair of doing any real damage. And he kind of takes advantage of that kind of exploit. Again, taking advantage of somebody's kindness never works well with the person who takes advantage of it. Ultimately, just distracting him so they can just shut down this whole business and put somebody else in charge so that people can get a livable wage there and stop being taken advantage of. Um, I can see how this would speak today to some degree. Um, but, yeah, it was pretty good. I really enjoy the this style of artwork. Again, I, I try not to judge art, right? But just this kind of, like, that just screams, you know, comic book to me, you know? 
highly detailed, uh, interesting looking characters. Um, sometimes the proportions can be a little weird, but it works for it. Like sometimes the, the bodies are super slender and the heads are slight, like an anime type thing going on. But I, I like it for the most part. Uh, next, pick of the week. Like just flat out, we all know what it is. It's Joe Fixit. Yeah, you take Joe Fixit, stick him in Las Vegas, doing Vegas Mafia boss stuff. That's always gonna that's always gonna hit for me. That's just gonna hit. And this particular one, for some reason, Kingpin wants to come to Las Vegas to kind of work with the local powers, the underground bosses, and try to get them to separate so he can take over everything at one time, right? So he's kind of sticking his nose where it doesn't belong. Well, in the airport, he runs into Peter Parker. Peter Parker, of course, recognizes him. And is like, hey, I'm gonna go see what goes down. Kingpin goes to this particular casino boss. And then finds out that his henchman, that's right, it's Joe Fixit, and uh, thinks he can take him one on one. Now, don't get me wrong, I know Kingpin's a strong character. I know there's a lot of fans of Kingpin out there, but uh, yeah, no, you ain't going to fisticuffs with the Hulk. Like that's just not that's that's not a thing. But he tries to anyway and gets whipped to the point where he has, well, you know, they did the bully thing from high school. Like, I've seen kids do this before where they're like, say it, say it, while they're twisting their arm or something. Until the kid says it and lets them go. Hulk did that to Kingpin in here. If you know anything about Kingpin, regardless of what you've read about him, uh, he's always been, like, super high ego and control guy. So he's not dealing with this very well at the end of the day. Peter Parker did one of his little pew-pew things real quick. Uh, just to stop a guy from shooting. I, not, I mean, it was cool seeing him in there, but you could have left him out and still got a good story out of this, honestly. So, yeah, good stuff. Good action in here, too. The brawl between them. Oh, like, oh, just say it. <laughs> say it like twisting his arm. Oh, so great. Good stuff. All right, dumpster fire of the week. I'm sorry. I posted something on Instagram. I thought maybe I was just, I was just having a little bit of fun. And I got a couple of DMs calling me a douchebag for it. But uh, I'm still going to stick by my guns on this one and say this was not a good story. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, Scarlet Witch, number one, super thick book because they stuck more advertisements in it. Just seemed like everything Scarlet Witch is in this. And immediately it's everything she can do within the blink of an eye. So nothing's really, there's no repercussions to her actions in any way. Now, I know what somebody's going to say story wasn't written for you and this is where i'm going to say that's absolutely incorrect the reason why i know it's incorrect is because you're referencing stories from house of m where she's constantly being told to remember her past right the whole where she wiped the villains by and of course her daughter the robot you know the, the vision family thing going on in here too i don't see those books given their values that everybody loves to put on these books i don't see that as a book that somebody's going to rush out and go grab real quick right these are people that were there at that time reading those comic books so how is it written for somebody else if you're referencing everything that would have been for people like me and you that would have been alive during these things i know the demographics for my channel are within a range of course but most of us are we're within 10 years apart for the most part so yeah this is just i don't know like a snap of a finger bad guy goes away and then it's just why I'm creating a magic shop and why I'm doing this. And, oh, here's the character from Strange Things. It's just a bunch of randomness going on in here for page after page after page just to find out that there's a bad guy someplace. And to get rid of him, all I need to do is touch him and turn him into stone. They tried to hint on a moral lesson here with, like, now the people get to decide what to do with him now that he's a statue. But remember, you reap what you sow type of metaphor going on there. Um destroy statue like he's not coming back to do anything good and he's he's a villain <laughs> like it's, right just destroy statue and it's done but i got a feeling he'll come back and of course at the end of this uh another person will walk through the door of lost hope or last hope is of course yeah you remember that storyline like i know the comic book was hot for like a second and everybody was buying it up for some reason but um I, I don't know. I, I just, I didn't much care for it. Well, I get, I, I probably won't be reading anymore. <laughs> just to avoid having to talk about it and people getting upset, I, I, I'm i laying off that storyline. I'm just going to leave it alone. <laughs> Next, just to show that I'm not a misogynistic pig, <laughs> I'll show you a female empowerment story that I actually did enjoy. 
Uh, Purgatory came out, and this is interesting because we have a half vampire, half demon. If you know anything about the Purgatory storyline, this is, of course, from Dynamite. And that's going to be relevant because you actually see a lot of Dynamite characters in this. The preface of this story is that the gods, the gods that we all know and love, you know, like, you know, Odin's son and, and you know, Egyptian gods and Aztec gods, you know, the various gods from various cultures are all sitting around. They're like, hey, Purgatory here got a little, she's a little too strong. She's like, she's got to go. She wants to hunt us down and kill us. She's got to go. Done. So the gods go send Hermes, you know, Hermes from your know, mythology classes, right? He goes around and he starts enlisting all these dynamite characters like Evil Ernie, you know, and um, all of the one from Hell, that H-E-L, that storyline, even her, and several others that dynamite has, some probably better known than others, to go and kill Purgatory. And in this, Purgatory is also giving her origin story through narration and storytelling and everything just kind of fit. Now, one could argue that, you know, over here where there was a lot of like self-complimenting, you know, type verbiage going on, you could make the argument, well, she's just doing it there. And you'd be right, but she's just doing it better, I thought, in my personal humbled opinion. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed this. I, I mean, it half vampire, half demon, all swimsuit model. <laughs> but not the only reason why you should buy this book. I, I like this. I like it when they kind of play with the whole gods versus, you know, the, the, the Odysseus of the story, if you will. You know, the one that defies the gods. I like that kind of storytelling. Um, and it's good. So, yeah, definitely, definitely, if my car bookshop has it, I'll be picking up more of that. That's the, the bare knuckle bone, strong female leading role action that I really enjoy right there. Not a touch your stone <laughs> well actually I'm not, it's not my thing so yeah this is a super short video so uh first off let me say thank you to everybody out there for swinging by i appreciate having you here again always let me know what you think in the comments down below did i miss something am i missing something about scarlet witch please let me know i, I you know i don't want to put just bad stuff out there um definitely if you know People miss things when they read it. It happens. Definitely let me know down below. If you're not, subscribe. Hit that notification bell. I try to have a video out every Thursday with my uh, ridiculous Halloween reviews. And I love having you around. And, of course, if you have time, I have coffee brand coffee down below and a merch store with all my evil layer stuff in it. So uh, definitely check that out in the description below. All right, guys. I got nothing else. Stay cool. Talk to you all later.